Hi, it's Ariel with Auto City in El Cajon, San Diego's award-winning used car dealership. This is a 2016 Audi All Road Premium Plus in Ibis white with a black leather interior. This car has about 20,000 miles on it. A few short weeks ago, Auto City saw its first Audi All Road to arrive on the lot. It was a 2013 with 54,000 miles on it. And I was super excited. I've always been very intrigued by the Audi All Road and it did not disappoint. I ended up calling it what the James Bond of sport utility wagons, comparing it to Subaru Outback being the Crocodile Dundee of sport utility wagons. It was a really cool car. But this All Road is a 2016. It's three years younger. It's got 30,000 less miles. So three years worth of upgraded technology and performance and a younger, more spry driving experience might just make this an even better All Road than that one. Let's find out. Just like its predecessor, the 2016 All-Road is pulled by a 2.0-liter 4-cylinder engine paired with an 8-speed shiftable auto tranny. Only this time with 9 extra horses, coming in at 220 horsepower and 258 foot LBs of torque. But it also gets slightly better gas mileage this time around with a combined rating of 24 MPGs. That's one more than before. More on the plus side, this is a premium plus, which is Audi's mid-level trim, smack dab in the middle of the base model, quote, premium, of which our 2013 All-Road was an example, and the upper-crusted Prestige. However, All-Road wagons didn't come in the Prestige trim, so this here premium plus is as fully loaded as it got, my friends. This means more bells and whistles, like the sport interior package, technology package, which includes satellite navigation, adjustable drive mode settings, etc. It even has its own owner's manual in the form of a video series built right into the infotainment system. It's like its own YouTube channel. So meta. It drives very similar to the 2013 model. It's the same two liter four cylinder engine. It's three years younger and only 20,000 miles and it is very civilized. The ceiling liner and A-pillars and sunroof mesh are black, whereas the 2013, they were like a white gray. So while that makes this a much cooler place to be, it's also a lot darker in here and uh, kind of dig it. But what I want to do is I want to let some of that sunshine in, especially since I got the AC dialed into where I like it. I'm not worried about the heat but I do like the light. One thing I really didn't get a chance to do with the last All Road is uh, check out its sport mode, which you can get into just by flicking the shifter down like this. And uh, instantly I can feel that the car gets a lot more aggressive and responsive. And now I'm not going that fast because there's some traffic in front of me, really unnecessarily slow driving cars in front of me. But it's still fun to drive at 35 miles an hour in sport mode. I am always looking for cars that are fun to drive at low speeds. Because let's be honest, 90% of the time you're driving with other cars on the road, you're not going to be going much faster than 40 miles an hour. If you do enjoy spirited, enthusiastic driving, the car that can give you that experience at low speeds in heavy traffic is a good car. Because you'll always be having fun in it. When the traffic clears and you're alone on the road, that is your chance to really open up and see what the car can do. And in sport mode, this car is quite fun. Not the fastest accelerating car. It's a two liter four cylinder wagon. It's got some weight to it. It's got some height to it. It's all wheel drive. But I'm not a speed freak, despite what you may think. I'm a control freak. <laughs> people who know me know I am. To me, control is more important than speed. And with, with Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system, these nice, big, grippy tires on this car, you have a lot of control in this car, and I am rather enjoying it. Something that I believe probably takes a little getting used to if you are a climate control addict, there is one knob that controls both the temperature and the fan speed. So to work them both you have to toggle back and forth with this switch so if i want to lower or increase the temperature of the air 
I can do so with the knob, but then if I want to increase the fan speed, I have to push that button and once again go back to the same knob. Not really a big deal. Something you'll probably get used to if you drive this car on a daily basis, which would be a very nice car to drive on a daily basis. Now the 2013 model did have optional manual shift, but one thing it didn't have are paddle shifters. So with the 2016 models, you get the paddle shifter upgrade, and if you're into that sort of thing, it is here for you. I'll tell you what is nice about having paddle shifters is that you don't have to think about changing any modes if you need to change gears. If you are in, say, a hairy situation, they're right there on the steering wheel, and I don't have to switch over to manual mode on the stick in order to be able to use the paddles. Other nice things about this car being the Premium Plus, besides the panoramic sunroof, the sport seats with the adjustable thigh support, the wood trim, is that you have a Bang & Olufsen sound system. There are some great things to discover here in the trunk, which is of course behind a powered lift gate. First of all, the security lid here, which most station wagons have nowadays, does retract normally like any security lid would. In addition, it kind of has this cool little thing where it flips upwards, and I'm not necessarily sure the practical purpose of that other than, you know, sort of getting more bigger things in and out, but it is pretty cool. There is also an additional net here which we will explore in a short bit. The trunk also does have sort of a heavy duty mud liner as well as heavy duty muddy buddy floor mats. In addition to the heavy duty muddy buddy floor mats, you also have standard regular floor mats that come with the car. So when you're on a romantic date with a, you know, in your, in your tuxedo and cocktail dress and whatnot, and you want to arrive in style, you got classic standard carpeted floor mats and when you want to take this thing for some fun in the adventure worlds of mud, sand, and dirt, you have these. Now what I think this mesh screen is for, if I'm not mistaken, when we fold the rear seats down as we're going to do now, which do fold down almost perfectly flat, by the way, and this little sucker attaches to the back of the back seat like so snaps in and then you have this mesh security lid here which keeps any heavier belongings from flying up front towards the two front seats it's an added safety feature it's also just cool i think it's cool i love netting i think it's sexy that's just my opinion of course there is also a place behind the back seats when they're placed upright in the normal position where you can attach the netting so that you can use the netting for the trunk along with the security lid at the same time. Some wagons have this sort of all in one piece, but this is more modular so you can customize your setup as you desire. Pretty cool. Of course, if you're anything like me, a guy who prefers to use his hands, you're going to have to get used to the fact that you cannot close this trunk manually. You can only close it with the push of a button. But uh, that's the way cars are going these days, kids. You better get used to it. Here's something new for the 2016 model as well that was not available in the 2013. There's a drive select button which lets you toggle between auto, dynamic, individual, and comfort. My guess is that the two with the most drastic difference would be comfort and dynamic. So let's check those out now. Right now I'm in comfort mode and the car is indeed very comfortable. I feel not a bump in the road, very smooth. I like it. It's nice. It's very nice. If we switch over to dynamic mode, the acceleration is instantly more aggressive and the suspension stiffens up ever so slightly. If I use dynamic and sport, then the car really comes to life. I like cars that can handle everything you throw its way. And this Audi Allroad is one of those cars that is versatile, comfortable, 
and civilized. I can get up on a Friday morning and I can sit in rush hour traffic for an hour and not hate my life because this is a nice place to be. It's comfortable. The sound system is great. It's quiet and smooth. Then I can get up on a Saturday morning and go for a spirited drive through the canyons, putting this thing in sport mode because it can handle winding roads like nobody's business. Then I could pack it full of gear, take my family camping into the mountains or onto the beach or whatever, and have a high flying root and toot and adventure. Then I could take it home, get it all cleaned up, vacuum all the sand and dirt out, put on a nice suit, and take my loved one out for an elegant date because it's an elegant luxury car. It does all of that. I love cars that can do all of that. Good job, car. I'll tell you one thing about this car is that it's got about 20,000 miles on it, but it drives like it's brand new. Everything feels tight and sparkling clean. Well, what can I say? This car did not disappoint. Apparently three years worth of advancements can do a lot for a model. And while the tech is a lot more high techy, I don't care about that stuff as much as I do driving dynamics. And the driving dynamics on this car are phenomenally good, drastically better than the 2013 model. I was having a lot of fun out there. This is a good little car, not to mention the fact that it only has 20,000 miles on it. This car drives like it's practically brand new. If you want to come take a look at this car or any other cars we have in our award-winning lot, come see us in El Cajon or visit us online at GoAutoCity.com. Thanks so much for watching. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Take it easy. Auto City.